Welcome to our Chinese Finance and Economy Briefing Program. Today, we have some exciting updates lined up for you. First, the Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing, HKEX, is all set to launch a weekly options contract based on the Hang Seng Tech Index starting September 2, pending regulatory approval. This move aims to diversify Kex's derivative products as new listings and trading turnover slow down. Plus, they're offering these new contracts at a 50% trading fee discount with waived commission until February 2025. Next up, Alibaba is making waves by collaborating with six top Chinese AI startups to enhance its workplace messaging platform, DingTalk. This partnership is expected to introduce advanced AI features to DingTalk's massive user base of over 700 million by the end of 2023, giving it an edge in the competitive market against rivals like Tencent's WeCom and ByteDance Feishu. Lastly, China's Ministry of Commerce is reviewing complaints from the machinery industries about the EU's. Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing, HKEX, the operator of the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, is set to introduce a weekly options contract based on the Hang Seng Tech Index to diversify its derivative products amid a slowdown in new listings and trading turnover. These new weekly options, expected to launch on September 2 pending regulatory approval, will allow investors to manage positions in response to short-term risks and specific events. HKEX is offering a 50% trading fee discount on these contracts and waiving the commission levy until February 2025. This move complements the existing weekly options for the Hang Seng Index and Hang Seng China Enterprises Index, which have seen a significant increase in average daily trading volume. Despite a recent dip in the Hang Seng Tech Index and a 13% drop in Kex's net profit for the first quarter, the exchange has seen strong performance in its derivatives market with a notable increase in trading volume for metal contracts on the London Metal Exchange, a subsidiary of HKEX. Alibaba Group Holding is enhancing its workplace messaging platform DingTalk by partnering with six leading Chinese AI startups to expand its generative AI features. These startups, including Minimax, Moonshot AI, Orionstar, Baichuan, Zhipu AI, and Zero1.AI, will help develop new AI functions for DingTalk, which already boasts over 700 million users. This collaboration aims to introduce advanced AI capabilities to a broader audience, leveraging the strengths of these startups, known locally as the Four New AI Tigers. DingTalk plans to offer industry-specific and client-customized AI solutions, enhancing features like long text processing and workflow automation. The platform has already seen significant adoption of its AI agent feature, with 500,000 customized agents created by the end of May. Tony Chanwen, Alibaba's AI model, will continue to support existing features on DingTalk, ensuring a robust and versatile user experience. China's Ministry of Commerce is reviewing complaints from the country's machinery industries regarding biased practices by the European Union, which could further strain ongoing negotiations over the electric vehicle EV, trade. The China Chamber of Commerce for Import and Export of Machinery and Electronic Products CCCME, has petitioned the government to investigate what they claim are trade barriers disguised as anti-subsidy probes. This review follows the EU's plan to impose tariffs on Chinese EV imports, to which China responded with an anti-dumping investigation into European pork. The CCCME has expressed strong opposition to the EU's anti-subsidy tariffs, questioning the investigation's integrity and transparency. Chinese Commerce Minister Wang Wentao and European Commissioner Valdis Dombrovskis are currently negotiating the details of the EU's investigation, with both sides emphasizing the need for cooperation to avoid trade frictions that could negatively impact bilateral trade and investment. South China Morning Post, China's sovereign bonds have experienced a remarkable rally, driving yields to a two-decade low amid ongoing concerns about the country's economic growth. With a sluggish stock market and a prolonged property downturn, the yield on 10-year sovereign bonds has dropped to 2.21%, the lowest since at least 2002. Yields on 20-year and 30-year bonds have also decreased significantly. The demand for these risk-free debt instruments remains high due to a shaky recovery in China's economy. Recent government data revealed a sharp slowdown in industrial profit growth, exacerbating market jitters. The Shanghai Composite Index fell below the psychological 3,000 mark, erasing all 2024 gains. Investors are cautious due to potential U.S. tariff risks, overcapacity in the industrial sector, and declining property prices. Expectations for further monetary easing from the People's Bank of China are also influencing bond yields. The PBOC may need to take additional measures to stimulate growth, with potential interest rate cuts anticipated after the third plenum next month. Despite the rally in sovereign bonds, the room for further upside could be limited, 
and the PBOC may intervene to cool off the gains. South China Morning Post, The Study Times, the newspaper of China's chief ideological training institution, has called for a softer approach to law enforcement to ease private sector jitters. This comes after incidents that worried enterprises about police raids over long dormant tax bills. The editorial from the Central Party School emphasized the need for a fair, just, stable and predictable environment for law enforcement, urging reforms to reduce inappropriate disruptions to company operations. The commentary followed a report from the National Development and Reform Commission, which stressed the need to support the private sector and end selective law enforcement methods. The Study Times piece highlighted the necessity of agility and novelty in law enforcement, suggesting the use of communication, negotiation, and coordination instead of hard penalties. This comes amid controversy over reports that several firms were asked to pay old tax bills, causing businesses to be wary. The State Taxation Administration denied launching a national investigation. The People's Daily also emphasized China's commitment to economic reform, with new policies aimed at preventing departments from working separately and restraining each other. Associated Press, the prospect of low-priced Chinese electric vehicles, EVs, entering the U.S. market from Mexico is causing alarm among American automakers. Chinese carmakers could exploit North American trade rules to send ultra-low-priced EVs into the U.S., potentially devastating the domestic auto industry. American EVs, which cost around $55,000, could struggle to compete with cheaper Chinese models. The U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, USMCA, could allow Chinese autos assembled in Mexico to enter the U.S. at low tariffs. To counter this, U.S. policymakers could pressure Mexico or use national security grounds to block Chinese EVs. Despite high federal tariffs on Chinese EVs, the USMCA's rules could still allow them to enter the U.S. market. Chinese automakers like BYD have made significant strides in cost efficiency due to heavy government subsidies. The U.S. has raised tariffs on Chinese EVs, but the USMCA could still provide a loophole. Blocking Chinese EVs on national security grounds is seen as the most effective measure. The U.S. has leveraged due to Mexico's dependence on the U.S. market, and the upcoming USMCA review in 2026 could lead to changes in the agreement. South China Morning Post Microsoft has announced that it will continue to allow customers in Hong Kong to use OpenAI's AI models through its Azure cloud computing platform, even as OpenAI moves to restrict access to its services from unsupported regions like mainland China and Hong Kong. Microsoft's local office confirmed that there has been no change to their Azure OpenAI service offerings in Hong Kong, emphasizing that they provide access to eligible customers via models deployed outside the region. This announcement comes after OpenAI, which counts Microsoft as its biggest investor, notified developers in unsupported countries and territories about additional measures to block access to its AI models via APIs starting July 9. This move is part of broader efforts by the U.S. government to limit China's access to advanced AI technology, citing national security concerns. In response, Chinese developers and users are turning to domestic alternatives like Beijing-based Zipu AI and other startups which are offering perks to draw those affected by OpenAI's new measures. South China Morning Post, Vice Premier Ding Xuexiang has been revealed as the head of the Communist Party's Central Science and Technology Commission, a significant move indicating that President Xi Jinping is delegating more powers in his third term. Ding addressed the second plenary session of the National Science and Technology Conference in Beijing, highlighting his role as head of the commission and a Politburo Standing Committee member. The commission, established in March last year, aims to oversee China's drive toward self-reliance in science and technology. Ding's appointment, which was previously undisclosed, suggests a stronger political will behind China's tech development, as he is now the state council's point man on science development. Experts believe this move reflects Xi's strategy of delegated centralization, where he retains central political authority while delegating policymaking tasks to trusted aides. Ding, with a background in mechanical engineering and extensive experience, is expected to bring continuity and consistency to China's science and technology policies. South China Morning Post, Hong Kong stocks took a significant hit on Thursday after data revealed a slowdown in industrial profits for Chinese companies, raising concerns about the country's economic recovery. The Hang Seng Index dropped 1.7% to 17,788.14 while the Hang Seng Tech Index fell 1.8%, and the Shanghai Composite Index retreated 0.8%. Chinese industrial companies reported a profit increase of just 0.7% in May, down from a 4% gain in the previous month. Measures by Beijing to support the property market, 
including cuts in down payment ratios and mortgage rates, were met with a lukewarm response from investors. Analysts at Nomura noted that Beijing's conservative stance on relaxing property market policies contributed to the subdued reaction. Major decliners included Xiaomi, which dropped 3.9%, and Nongfu Spring, which slumped 3.5%. The broader Asian markets also showed weakness, with Japan's Nikkei 225 and Australia's S and PASX 200 both slipping 1.2%, while South Korea's Kospi retreated 0.5%. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. Can't get